what's going on? Welcome in. So Matt Miller of ESPN just released a seven round New York Jets mock draft. Let's take a look at who he has the New York Jets selecting. So for reference and context, let's take a look at the top 10 so we have an idea of who else is on the board at spot number 10. So he has the Bears going with Caleb Williams, Washington going with Jaden Daniels, the Vikings trading up for Drake May, right? New England's moving down. Denver moving up to spot number four with Arizona to draft J.J. McCarthy. So four straight quarterbacks, um, you know, to start this draft off. Marvin Harrison to the Chargers at five. Malik Neighbors to the Giants at six. Joe Alt to the Titans at seven. T uh, Dallas Turner to the Falcons at eight. Romo Dunze to the Bears at nine. And then with the 10th overall pick, he has the Jets going with Brock Bowers. I feel like this is a pretty common uh, draft selection here, right? We're seeing this time and time again in these different mock drafts, right? With the Jets signing Mike Williams, Tyron Smith, uh, Morgan Moses. And also, too, with the pre-draft, or not pre-draft, but the War Room video by Joe Douglas, I mean, the Jets just put it out uh, last offseason, he was considering taking Michael Mayer at spot number 15. You know, you compare the two tight end prospects, Brock Bowers is a much better, much better tight end prospect than Michael Mayer was at the time. And as we all know, Mayer ended up going in round two. But the point is, Douglas, you know, with, with Uzama on the roster with Ruckert and Conklin a year younger, he was still considering considering a tight end at 15 when it wasn't really the biggest need. Um, so one would assume that he would really, really like Brock Bowers here. Now, granted, they're, they're two different types of players. I would say Bowers is a much better uh, pass catcher, but with Michael Mayer, people talked a lot about his blocking coming out, uh, which... Also, you know, could have played a part in Joe Douglas's, you know, evaluation of him. But nonetheless, Brock Bowers is, you know, an athletic freak, right? A playmaking machine. SEC defenses knew where the football was going, like, on critical situations, and they still could not slow Brock Bowers down. He's a rare, rare athlete. Uh, and, you know, of course, he would be an upgrade over Tyler Conklin or Rucker. He would come in easily as the number one tight end on the, like the number one pass catching tight end threat on the roster. He would give Rodgers somebody over the middle of the field to work with. Uh, he would give, you know, this Jets offense another dynamic, uh, some more flexibility again over the middle of the field here. We still have an address slot wide receiver, which I think is pretty interesting. You know, are they going to give that job to Xavier Gibson? Are they going to try to sign Tyler Boyd still? We'll see how it plays out. But with Brock Bowers here at spot number 10, the Jets are a much better football team with Bowers than without. Uh, now, if you flip it and look at who else is on the board, uh, Fashanu is still here, right? I think Fashanu makes a ton of sense for the Jets at spot number 10, even after the signing of Tyron Smith, right? The one knock that people have on Fashanu is that he might, might need some time on the bench in that first year. Well, with Tyron Smith, you know, the Jets only signed him to a one-year contract. What is he, 32, 33 years old, somewhere in that range? He's not the, the long-term answer there. And Tyron Smith also gets hurt a lot. So he pretty much misses time every single season for the last handful of seasons. So Fashanu, I feel like, that could really make a lot of sense. Talise Fuaga is still on the board. I'm a big, big fan of Brian Thomas from LSU. I would not be upset if the Jets drafted him. Um, but, and then also, you know, we, we have the whole argument about trading back too. But I, I feel like with the four quarterbacks off the board and two quarterbacks, or sorry, uh, two teams trading up to the top 10, really the top five, to go land their guys, I feel like a trade up for 10 might be a little hard to kind of project right if four quarterbacks are gone and we've already seen two within the top 10 so anyway brock bowers to the jets at 10 okay so moving on to uh pick number 72 overall third round here he has the new york jets going with cameron kitchens safety from miami i freaking love this pick i love cam kitchens i think he's actually going to be uh going in the in, in round two in my opinion, he's the second best safety in this class, right behind uh, Tyler Newbin. But man, Kitchens, to me, is one of these balanced safeties. He's a ball hawking, you know, a, a ball hawking playmaker in the deep parts of the field, but he can also come up and help against the run. Cam Kitchens plays fearless, he's aggressive. And we look at safety right now for the Jets, Tony Adams. You know, young player that the Jets really, really love. I mean, any any time that you hear uh, Ulbrich or Salt talk about him, they just go on and on about how good he is. 
They lost Jordan Whitehead. Ashton Davis is still a free agent. They brought back Chuck Clark, but he is coming off an ACL. Um, we need a third safety, right? We need a thir third safety. But in my opinion, I think if the Jets were to draft Cameron Kitchens here in round three, he would start. In my opinion, he's an upgrade. So again, I love this pick. I, I think he was one of the mainstays on the Hurricanes defense. He was somebody that a lot of a lot of coaches relied on to make plays, you know, to have that range in the deep parts of the field. And Kitchens, I mean, he he hardly let the coaches down. So I would love this pick here for the Jets. In the third round, by the way, again, you know, I, I think there's some safety needy teams in round two, like the Buffalo Bills, for example that could snag one up, right? I, I think, uh, you know, if you're a team that needs a safety, but you don't want to pay the top price for Justin Simmons or Quandre Diggs or Micah Hyde, right? You want to save a couple million bucks and just draft win a round two, you know, I, I could see Kitchens off the board. But again, in this scenario here, he has the Jets landing him in round three. Okay, so at 111 in the fourth round here, he has the New York Jets going with wide receiver from Louisville, Jamar Thrash. Now, Thrash is interesting because six foot 190 pounds he provides a lot of a lot, a lot of speed a lot of quickness i think his route running is really solid you also look at wide receiver for the jets you know garrett wilson of course beast mike williams was brought in beast right second best receiver on the team but we don't really have a clear picture on when he's going to be 100 healthy right sala and douglas kind of talked about you know mike williams uh road to recovery I, I guess uh you know his rehab process coming off of the acl it, it's still up in the air if he's going to be good to go for training camp and whatnot and, and that's a bit in my opinion concerning it, it's not like we didn't know this news was you know coming down the pipeline here or anything like that but you know for the jets of, to, to look at the wide receiving room and say okay this is a passing league we got to get rogers help and we have one of the thinnest in the entire league We've only added one player who's coming off the ACL who does have, you know, a pretty lengthy uh, injury history here, only having one season where he played the full year back in 2019, where ironically enough, he had the best season of his career. But the Jets still need bodies here. We still need talent. And Thrash is a guy who I feel like underneath can make a lot of sense for the Jets. Um, again, there's going to be, especially too with Brock Bowers, assuming this, you know, um, mock draft you know becomes true brock bowers would be like the go-to option over the middle of the field right and then you would bring thrash in to really hurt defenses over the middle of the field and on to really hurt defenses over the middle of the field probably on like those third and fives third and uh third and sixes right i think mesh routes with jamari uh with thrash would look awesome uh, with him not really being the primary, you know, go-to target here, I, I think it's a, a perfect, perfect spot for him. And the one thing about Aaron Rodgers, he makes wide receivers better. He he makes wide receivers better. So um, maybe you know you could push back and say, well, Thrash has a bit of a drop problem. Fair, but I think you know we are in the fourth round here. We're not drafting in the top fifteen. So you know every prospect is going to have a couple weaknesses here and there. Okay, let's go with the next pick here in the fourth round. Uh, Miller has the Jets going with Garrett Greenfield, tackle from South Dakota State. Now, what's really interesting is, you know, <laughs> you know, crazy enough, the Jets actually have two coaches, one of which, uh, one of which is Tony Dews, at the South Dakota State Pro Day today, right? And I'm filming this on March 27th um, to, to specifically watch Greenfield. Now, Greenfield, six foot seven, 310, 315 pounds, super athletic tackle. One of the more athletic tackles in this class, uh, solid pass protector, some questions potentially in the running game here, but this to me kind of seems like a Joe Douglas type of pick. Uh, a sixth year senior, he's a two-time captain. I think when you look at Joe Douglas's uh, previous drafts, he does tend to take older tackles in the mid rounds. Carter Warren was like that, Max Mitchell was like that. Uh, back in his first draft, he uh, picked up Cam Clark. This to me definitely feels like a Joe Douglas pick and also the biggest, I would say maybe knock on Greenfield is strength and technique. And two of those things, right? Th those two weaknesses could literally be solved with time on the bench, practice, preseason, training camp, all of that stuff, right? If Greenfield has a year on the bench, man, like 
and, and you're talking about him potentially, you know, winning a tackle job in 2025. I mean, the, and, and he's developing at a nice clip and, it, it, you know, throughout the course of his rookie year, 2024. I really think this could be a nice selection here for the Jets. Okay, next up here, pick 185 in round six. He has the Jets going with Tanner McLaughlin, tight end from Arizona. So for me, I got to be honest, not the biggest, biggest fan of this, you know, of this pick here, because if you're taking a look at this current mock draft, he has the Jets going with Bowers at 10. Right, he that me, would mean that Bowers is going to be like the franchise tight end, somebody to build around, like a, a foundational piece for years on end. Behind him, you have Tyler Conklin, a, a proven veteran, right? Somebody who I still feel like is going to contribute with or without Brock Bowers on this football team. Behind him, we have Jeremy Rucker, you know, a young developmental tight end who I would say maybe flashed a little bit. Uh, more last season than his first year. The Jets also tried to bring in a young tight end last year with like a ton of athletic ability in Zach Coons, uh, six foot seven coming out of Old Dominion, but he ended up just being released, right? There's just not enough roster spots to, you know, justify bringing in like four to five tight ends. So I, I think at the end of the day, if we're drafting Bowers here, and we already have a young developmental guy. We already have another veteran on the roster. Plus, we're still paying CJ Uzama dead money. I just don't really feel the need to draft yet another young developmental tight end here, uh, you know, late. And then in round seven here, pick 256 overall. He has the New York Jets going with quarterback from Tennessee, Joe Milton. It's like, this is going to sound crazy, but I believe it to be true. If, if The second Joe Milton enters the NFL... He is literally going to have, I would say, a top five to ten strongest arm in the league. Whether he's a backup, starter, whatever happens with his career, that's how strong of an arm Joe Milton has. I mean, it's absolutely effortless. He was from Florida, commits to Michigan, transfers over to Tennessee, uh, loses the job initially to Hendon Hooker, or actually won the job, then Hooker replaced him. And then Milton ended up taking over once Hendon got drafted by the Lions. But Joe Milton, again, the arm strength is there, viewed as a developmental prospect. He can beat teams from the pocket. He can hurt teams from outside the pocket. I think he did a really good job taking care of the football a year ago. Uh, back with the Vols, you know, this is an offense that throws the ball quite a bit. Uh, they, there's a real big emphasis on the hypo offense of push the ball down the field. Deep shots, deep shots, deep shots. We're aggressive. We don't care what the defense is going to do. We are going to beat you over the top. Um, and that's exactly the type of quarterback that Joe Milton uh, is, right? He is somebody that will take shots down the field. Now, the one area of concern here with Joe Milton is the accuracy, right? Maybe taking some speed off the football in the short yardage uh, to medium parts of the field. Um, you know, not, not always throwing the fastball, if you will. But I, I think at the end of the day, if the Jets don't draft a quarterback we end up trading Zach Wilson and we want to take a chance on one in the seventh round I'm all for it right I think Milton I don't see him as a starter year one year two I, I think he does need a lot of time on the bench um but with that said again the raw tools are there the raw tools are there with Joe Milton and then last but not least, I pick 257. He has the New York Jets going with Brady Latham, guard from Arkansas. A depth move here from the SEC, a run blocking guard from the SEC uh, here in the, in the bottom of the seventh round. Literally the last pick in the draft. Um, tons of starts under his belt, back with Arkansas. And I would say this, you know, the Jets can, they have to continue building the offensive line. Joe Douglas made a comment at the... Uh, uh, owners meetings right in Orlando where he said that he feels like he completed the offensive line uh he, he feels like he did his job there but I would push back and say you know we're one injury away from having a bunch of question marks or potentially having you know like the floodgates open um I don't want that to happen I'm not saying drafting a guard in the seventh round would fix every issue but you know I I would like the Jets to continue to be proactive continue to address depth as in or you know almost with the mindset of we like, I want to see that same level of urgency with the backups as there were with the starters, right? Trading away a pick for Morgan Moses, signing Tyron Smith, bringing in John Simpson. I want that same level of aggression and, ur again, urgency to say, hey, we, we got to figure out the backup situation, right? They blamed 2023 on injuries, but they didn't have the depth. So 
in my opinion, it's, it's just, it, it's not a fair argument to say, well, this player got hurt, that player got hurt, season's over. We didn't have the depth. It's his job to figure out the depth, right? The Bengals, they had injuries too. The Bills, they had injuries. The Colts, they had injuries. The Browns, they had it. Teams get hurt, right? They, they, teams get beat up. Offensive linemen, quarterbacks, everybody gets hurt in the NFL. I think we, we saw 60 plus different starting quarterbacks in the last two years separately, not combined separately. Yeah, guys get hurt. You, you got to prepare. So at the end of the day, I actually really like this draft. Um, maybe not the perfect draft, maybe not exactly what I would do. Again, I think I, I'm still kind of leaning in the offensive line camp in, in, in round one, but I love Kitchens at round three. I think that's excellent value for a good football player who fills a need. Um, also, I, I think the two fourth round picks are, are slam dunks as well. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, go Jets.